Well, hello YouTubers, retro computing enthusiasts. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And it's time again for another episode of Retro Computing Find of the Week. And what have I got up on the bench today? It is a Tandy 1400 Personal Computer LT. One of the early laptops. It was actually kind of a laptop form factor. Um, I had a Tandy 1000 back in the day and I loved that computer and this is basically like the portable version of that so um, I'm hoping it works I don't know yet um, this is another computer I got from my friend Jim in Phoenix when I went down to visit him a few weeks ago actually more like a month ago now and you know I'm still unpacking all the stuff I got from Jim and picked up other places on that that month and a half long trip that I was gone I picked up a lot of stuff some of it's going to show up here on retro computing find of the week um, including this one so Jim gave me this he said you know same thing he told me with the last computer uh, the uh, the Mac Macintosh plus one megabyte he says I got nothing in it I got it just scrap don't know if it works you know you can fix it you can scrap it out whatever you want to do so let's see if it works before we decide what to do with it so far, I've been on a pretty good run with these things. Uh, the last couple I have plugged in and they've worked. So, hopefully this one will too. Although, we have some issues with this one that uh, may prevent us from getting it up and running easily. First off, I don't have the power brick for it. This thing had an external power supply. Did not come with that. So, I'm going to have to cobble something together. It needs, according to the bottom plate... 15 volts at 700 milliamps to boot up. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cobble something together. Um, it also does not have the internal battery. Oops. So that was removed at some point. So um, I'm hoping this thing will run without the internal battery present. I don't know for sure. So that's a question mark, but it looks to be in pretty good condition physically. It's a little dirty, it's a little scuffed up, it needs a little bit of work, but you know, on the whole, it's in pretty good shape, and it came with a couple of discs, which I hope, I don't know for sure, that at least one of them is bootable. I may be able to boot it up on just a standard DOS disc, but I know that the Tandy DOS was a little bit different, and we're not going to be able to access probably all the functions of the computer unless we boot it up on Tandy DOS. Now, I may be able to get that off the internet, we shall see, but um, I guess I'm putting the cart before the horse because I got to know if the thing even works before I can worry about whether it boots up or not. So let's take a close look at it, and then I'll see if I can cobble together a power supply and see if I can get it to boot up. Yep, so here we are, Tandy 1400. Yeah, it's got some scuffs, some scratches, it's got some tape on here. I don't know what the tape is for. It doesn't seem like it's holding anything together. Um, here's the under the cover LCD screen keyboard a little dirty but not too bad a couple of discs came with it communications program communications program so I don't know we'll see if they boot up um, like I said the battery bay is empty there's no battery in there uh, let's look at the back of it got a lot of ports on the back uh, the usual parallel serial it's got a uh, it's got a switch to turn the monitor on or off so I guess you can use an external composite video monitor with it got a modem port uh, for the acoustic modem but it also has regular phone jacks for built-in modem uh, Oh yeah, that's 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 video. That's serial. So it's got RGB video as well as composite. And then it's got a port for an external disk drive and a port for an external keyboard. Okay, that's a lot of ports. And then here's the power adapter. Uh, from my research, apparently it's center negative. So I'll need to remember that when I cobble something together to power it up. Don't want to put the polarity on it wrong. That would probably let the magic smoke out right away. Okay, let's turn it over and look at the bottom. Okay, so here's the bottom of it. It's got a built-in carrying strap, or it's got a built-in carrying handle, which is nice. 
Um, there's the plate on the bottom of it. Made in Japan. Remember when things were made in Japan? Now everything's made in China. Japanese make good stuff. Chinese make crap. Just my personal opinion. Let's see here. On the side, we've got uh, the power main power switch over there. I'm not sure what that internal external thing is. Maybe that's for the disk drives. I don't know. So it has an external disk drive connector. Um, contrast knob for the LCD. Okay. And I think that's about all the controls. Let me flip it over and see if there's anything on the other side. No, nope, nothing on this side. Okay. So let me see if I can cobble together something to power this thing with, and we'll see if we can power it up, see if there's any life left in it. Okay, I think I've got this figured out. I found a um, cigarette lighter adapter with the right type plug on the end of it to fit in the power connector. So I need to just wire this up backwards. I need to put negative on the, uh, the center pin and then positive on the outer parts. I've got my... I got my adjustable benchtop power supply here, so I will set it to right about 15 volts. Okay, turn it off. So let me hook this up. Let me put the positive to the outside on that, and the negative. Well, I'm going to need a an alligator clip because my little clips won't connect to that. So connect this up. Okay. So, let me reposition the camera, and we'll see if this thing has any life in it when I turn it on, okay? So, we turn the power on first. Power switch is off. Yeah, it's off. It's hard to read. So, it's off. We turn this on. Turn the power switch on. Anything? Anything? Bueller? Bueller? Huh, nothing seems to be happening. No lights, no nothing. Let me double check my setup here. I think I know what the problem is, at least it doesn't seem to be getting power. Okay, I was this this cigarette lighter connector is all rusty, and I don't think my my uh, connector here is making good contact on the edge. So I've I've kind of cleaned it a little bit. Let's try it again. See what happens. Ah, I knew something was going to happen because I got a spark when I adjusted it. Look, we're getting something on the screen. The screen lit up. Oh, the contrast. I don't know if that's going to show up on video. Let me see if I can... There's something on the screen. Let me adjust the contrast, see if we can make it a little easier to read. Hey! Alright. Is that readable? I don't know. It says... Uh, Phoenix BIOS version 2.51.70, copyright 1984-1985-1986, Phoenix Technologies Limited, all rights reserved. Uh, 640K bytes of RAM tested. Okay. So, all right. Let's see. Neither drive lights on, so I don't know what will happen if I put, a, put the discs in. Ah, okay, this one's... This one over here, red light came on when I stuck the disc in. So we'll see what happens. You may tell me it's not a bootable disc. I don't know. But hey, oh, starting MS DOS. Okay, I do hope that's showing up. The contrast is not great. Um, 
Yeah, it's kind of a hard to read screen. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh! Keyboard monitor on, time delay set to 300 seconds. Telex. Telex. It's starting a program. It must be, that communication program must be called Telex. But hey, it works! It works! I got a working Tandy 1400. I'm loving it. Thank you, Jim. It works. This is the second working computer you've given me. Let's see. What's it say now? Reading configuration file. And it's got a line of stuff down along the bottom. Let's see. Uh, copyright, yada, yada, yada. CTS RTS handshaking disabled. CTS line is low. Press Alt-Z for help on special keys. Okay, let's see. Alt-Z for help. And C BBS 9600. Okay, so this is this is basically a, uh, a program, a modem program for, for talking to other computers. Like back in the BBS days, I imagine, is what Telex is. Okay. Let's see here. Alt-Z, it said. For special keys. It's, it's, ah! Oh my goodness, there's a lot of there's a lot of options there. Holy cow. Huh. Let's see. Uh, exit Telex. Well, let's just try exiting this program and see what else is on this disk. Alt-X. Exit Telex. Yes. Well, keyboard works. At least all the keys I've tried so far. Let's see what's on this disk. It's definitely bootable. Yeah. It scrolled by, but it had the usual command com, auto exec bat, whatnot. And then I guess all this other stuff is part of Telex. Okay. But hey, I couldn't be happier. This thing works. This thing works. I got a working Tandy 1400. Yes, I love it. Um, it needs a little cleaning up. The keyboard's pretty dirty. Uh, the case is, yeah, kind of dirty and scratched up, but. And I don't have a... I gotta come up with a better power option than this. I'll have to cobble together something a little more permanent and more reliable than this. And maybe see about getting backup battery in there. Maybe a modern... Maybe there's a modern option for it that would uh, work better and last longer than the original NICAD batteries that went in it. Speaking of NICAD batteries, I've done some research on this thing and apparently the time and date backup battery inside here is notorious for corroding and destroying the motherboard. So at some point I'm going to have to, if I want to keep this, I'm going to have to take it apart and clip that battery out of there and put in a modern replacement. Apparently it's soldered in. So that will need to be done fairly quickly. Forthwith, as they say. But uh, yeah, hey, it's working. And uh, I couldn't be much more pleased with it. I mean, it booted right up. No real issues. Cool. Um, in the past, I've sold a lot of the vintage computers I've got, turned them into like retro gaming systems and sold them, put them on eBay, put them on Craigslist, sold them. In fact, I'll put a link to my eBay in the bottom of this video. You can check out, see if I'm selling anything at the moment when this video comes out. But this one, this one I think I'm going to keep. I think this is a keeper. I think I will clean it up. Maybe hit the case with a magic eraser, get the tape and the tape residue off, and uh, work on getting a, a permanent, reliable power supply for it. Clean up the keyboard. And I think I'll just keep this one. I think this is going to be my personal computer. It'd be great to have, you know, a little PC-compatible computer in a small form factor I can just tuck away in the closet. I don't have a big tower, you know, full-size keyboard, all that stuff to deal with. So, yeah. I mean, it could come in really handy for me. So I think this one's a keeper. Some stuff there I need to clean off. Somebody left a little note on the side of it. Don't know what it means. I might be able to do a little research and tinker and maybe get better contrast and brightness out of the LCD because it's very hard to read unless you're right straight on it. Let me tell you, it's, it's difficult. But, you know, it is... LCDs of this this era they were they were not as good as what we've got today so uh, maybe that's about as good as it'll get but I'll do some research and see if there's a way to improve it any I would hope there is 
Maybe I can crank up the brightness a little. I don't know. It's very dim. Anyway, yeah, this is a keeper. This is going to be my, it's going to be my own computer. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to clean it up. It's going to be a showpiece in my own collection. Definitely. Yeah, this is a keeper. All right. Well, that that's great. I'm three for three on uh, these retro computers. Just plugging them in and getting them to boot up. So that's wonderful. Uh, and thanks again, Jim, for giving me this. And uh, I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe. See my future videos. There'll be more retro computing finds of the week and other stuff. I'm still working on Naboo stuff. I'm still working on Jazz 80 stuff and other projects, too, in the background. So there'll be more videos on that stuff, too. So subscribe. Check out my main channel. Electric Geek 64, which is where I break down computers that don't work and nobody wants and get the gold and silver out of them. It's kind of lucrative, kind of fun. Check that out if you're at all interested. I also do lapidary and other stuff over there. So check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.